Okay, um, so the uh, title of this talk is uh, Hepatitis C and B co-infection. Next slide. So uh, this uh, slide goes over the epidemiology of hepatitis C and hepatitis B. So um, the worldwide prevalence of hepatitis B model infection is 250 million uh, people. Uh, for hepatitis C is 70 million. Um, for those who have both hepatitis C and hepatitis B together, uh, prevalence is one to 15%. Um, maybe um, this number may be an underestimation of the true number, just because there may be um, an unrecognized um, or occult um, B infection in, in these patients. Um, the U.S. prevalence uh, for hepatitis B is 1.9 million. For hepatitis C is 2.4 million. Again, these numbers may be lower than the actual numbers due to underreporting or under or a lack of diagnosis. Um, and the co-infection rates um, with both are is 1.4%. Uh, Next slide. So routes of transmission, uh, co-infection can occur in two ways. First, the viruses are um, co-transmitted at the same time. So um, both viruses have the same routes of transmission, such as an intravenous drug use, blood transfusion, and vertical transmission. So um, that person could, in theory, get both viruses, viruses at the same time um, based on um, what uh, transmission they have. Um, or uh, the other route is a super infection, such as um, they already have one virus to begin with, um, and then they get another vi the other virus later down the road. Um, superinfection is the most common mechanism of developing co-infection. Um, hepatitis C superinfection is seen more commonly than hepatitis B superinfection. Next slide. So um, viral interactions between hepatitis B and hepatitis C. So patients um, with combined hepatitis B and hepatitis C infection may show a large spectrum of virologic profiles. Um, the virologic response are widely divergent and dynamic over time. And possibility the hepatitis B and hepatitis C can alterate dominance during different periods of infection. Next slide. So most co-infection, most co-infected patients appear to have active hepatitis C replication and inactive hepatitis B replication. Um, hepatitis C infection can directly suppress hepatitis B replication, um, and this is mediated by endogenous interferon. So a person gets infected with hepatitis C um, in response that they make um, interferon, and that can um, suppress hepatitis B replication. So this can produce a phenomenon of occult or serologically silent hepatitis B. Um, so they may have um, an undetectable um, surface antigen, um, um, but uh, they would have a positive Hep B core antibody. Uh, most patients who are infected with hepatitis B as adults develop hepatitis B clearance without chronic infection. Next slide. Um, fewer patients have high hepatitis B viremia levels with low or undetectable hepatitis C RNA. Um, and some hepatitis B, um, hepatitis C co-infected patients, each virus exerts its own pathogenic role. Um, this may cause a cumulative effect in terms of liver injury and may explain the high degree, high grade of disease severity um, that's frequently observed in some cases of co-infection. Next slide. So what's the effect of co-infection and severity of liver disease? So this is controversial. Um, our findings are not consistent from one study to the next. Um, some studies show a more rapid fibrosis progression in co-infected individuals. Um, some studies show higher prevalence of cirrhosis, hepatic decompensation, higher percentage of, hep of HCC development, there's potential for worsening liver disease and increased risk of progression to HCC and co-infected patients, and this emphasizes the importance of treatment. Next slide. So in terms of treating Hep B and Hep C co-infection, um, so there was an FDA, uh, it was FDA warning um, about the risk of hepatitis B reactivating and some patients who are treated with direct acting antivirals for hepatitis C. Uh, there are 24 cases of Hep B reactivation reported to the FDA in hepatitis C and hepatitis B in co-infected patients who are treated with DAAs during November during 
um, the time frame from November 2013 to July of 2016. Um, two patients died and one required a liver transplant. Um, baseline worsening liver disease will be a will be a greatest risk from hepatitis flare. This number includes only cases submitted to the FDA. So there are uh, probably um, additional cases that were, that are were present but not reported. Um, hepatitis B reactivation was not reported as an adverse event in the clinical trials submitted for DAA approvals because patients with Hep B co-infection were excluded from clinical, from those clinical trials. Next slide. So boxed warning um, was added to the drug label. So there's a risk of hepatitis B virus becoming an active, a, an active infection again in any patient who has a current or previous infection with hepatitis B and is treated with a direct acting antiviral medicines for hepatitis C. Healthcare professionals should screen all patients for evidence of current or prior Hep B infection before starting treatment with DAAs and monitor patients using blood tests for Hep B flare-ups or reactivation during treatment and post-treatment follow-up. Next slide. So um, treating Hep B and Hep C co-infection. Um, so a general approach, um, there are published guidelines from AASLD regarding the treatment of hepatitis B. So uh, we follow those. Um, if they have serologically silent Hep B co-infection, uh, meaning um, these patients are surface antigen negative or uh, sorry, with positive um, Hep B core antigen, uh, their uh, HPV DNA viral load is negative or low level of viremia, we would go ahead and treat um, hepatitis C with close monitoring of, um, of uh, a potential flare of hepatitis B. If they have an active um, hepatitis C, hepatitis C, hepatitis C, and hepatitis B co-infection, um, so these patients have, um, uh, they both have a high uh, hepatitis C uh, viral load and a high hepatitis B viral load, then uh, we would consider treating hepatitis B first um, and then um, treating the hepatitis C with um, the DAAs with close monitoring. Next slide. So in summary, hepatitis C and hepatitis B co-infection has the potential to increase severity of liver disease and risk for compl complications such as HCC. Due to, due to interaction of the two viruses and potential for reactivation, treatment uh, in co-infected patients is complex. It's important to be aware of potential for reactivation when treating Hep C and Hep B co-infection. Uh, we screen for hepatitis B should be done prior to initiation of hepatitis C treatment. Frequent monitoring for hepatitis B DNA replication during treatment is required in co-infected individuals. Um, next slide. And are there any questions? <laughs> 